Xiamen, an island city in southeastern China, is known for its abundant tourism resources. With the beauties of a small subtropical island, only a little over 10 kilometers in diameter, it attracts tens of millions of visitors annually, an astonishing number. In this video, I will take you to this island and show you not only the common attractions, but also the elusive lives of creatures struggling to survive in the rim of the artificial world. Located in the center of the city is the geographical signature of Xiamen, Yundang Lake. A former harbor once sheltering countless fishing boats, the lake is separated from the sea that surrounds the island by a seawall built on the western shore. The lake has not been sealed off from the sea though. The opening and closing of a sluice monitors the tidal fluctuation in a lake. The lake is also home to many creatures. Little egrets, the city bird of Xiamen, settle on a mangrove-surrounded island in the center of the lake. Just like the fishermen used to live by Yundang Harbor, the egrets find the lake a bonanza of fish. When these natural fishes hunt, weather condition can hardly get in their way. Standing above the waves, the statue of the egret goddess also symbolize the ideal harmony between human and nature. In spring, the southern part of the lake is often teemed with tiny jellyfish. They are most likely younglings of moon jellyfish. It's unsure whether these jellyfish live in the lake or are just brought in by tides. Nevertheless, the lake has its own problems. It used to be the city's wastewater container. In 2011, over 10,000 tons of waste water was released into the lake per day despite its enclosed nature. This finally results in the lake water's eutrophication, a biological phenomenon that directly relates to the massive dying of native aquatic creatures and the booming of close and tolerant invasive species. The government has invested much on conservation effort, and fortunately, the lake's landscape has been much improved. When night falls, it's a different world in the lake. Ghostly boat glasses haunt the dark water. A commonly seen fish in Yundang Lake, they sometimes swim in a large school. A colony of skeleton shrimps is found on a piece of seaweed. Although called shrimp, they are actually an amphipod instead of decapod, which implies they are closer kinship to whale laws than to shrimp. Sea squirts, attached to the rocks, filter feed with their siphons. Sea anemones also welcome the rising tide. They outstretch their tentacles to capture plankton in the incoming current. It's amazing to see sea anemones of such a great variety in the brackish water lake embedded in a downtown city. Their colorful presence has no doubt revitalized the nocturnal tidal zone. Feather duster worms also extend their radiolus to collect floating food particles. A caratolid worm hides beneath the mud. The cluster of filaments it reaches out is its respiratory organ. This is an epitaph of Nereus. It is a gamete covering segment that breaks off from the worm to participate in reproductive swarming. The larvae of mullet assemble at the surface. When they mature, they will make up the largest school of fish in the lake. Crustaceans are also attracted by the nutritious tide. So are the gobies. These gobies all belong to different genera. Sharing a common adaptation to brackish environment, they flourish in a lake. Waiting patiently, they ambush small creatures passing by. Knowing the prowling danger, this shrimp buries itself in mud to avoid predation. The spiral egg belts of aquatic snails reveal to us that there is still much to discover about nature in a lake. 
However, as these floating litters suggest, it's already time for us to rethink our treatment of nature.